Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Shaw. In this video, I'm going to talk about the term ripped and the history of it, where it came from. Before I get into that topic, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. The best topic ideas I turn into video is just like this. All right, this is more of a history lesson. It might bore the snot out of some of you, but um, basically, you know, back in the day, there was this gentleman by the name of Clarence Bass, and I'm going to dive into that in a little bit, but he was a freak. And he had a book out at the time, 1980, called Ripped. And that's basically the origin of the term. So for those of you that are looking to get ripped in the new year, I strongly suggest you dive into the history and look at, look at some of Clarence Bass's writings, what he's accomplished over the years, and get a little history lesson. See where the term rip came from. See what this guy is all about because it's worth your time and it's certainly worth your, worth a few dollars to check out his, his books. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the uh, time machine back a little bit. I really started lifting in 1986. Uh, at at uh, New Mexico Tech gym, the college gym, and um, <clears throat> excuse me, back then I would get bodybuilding magazines because there was really no other source of information other than uh, I believe Joe Weider's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. So we really relied on bodybuilding magazines back in the day, and even, whether you were a bodybuilder or weren't a bodybuilder, that's where a lot of the information came. You had magazines like Iron Man, etc. But Anyway, in these magazines, you would be flipping through and you were used to seeing pictures of Arnold and Franco and, uh, you know, Mike Menser and all these old school bodybuilders. But then you would come to an advertisement called that you'd see this big thing ripped and you'd see Clarence Bass. Now, Clarence Bass was a freak of nature back then, back then. And his book came out in, uh, in 1980, so he was around before then. He was absolutely shredded and diced. Like, comparing Clarence Bass to Arnold or any of the other Olympians at that time, Clarence Bass really took it to a whole new level. And honestly, just like Tom Platts in that generation, I don't think it was his intention I don't think he set out to do so. He just lived a specific lifestyle and uh, was able to develop a physique that stood out from so many other uh, bodybuilders. Now, before you jump into the, uh, into the conversation, assuming Clarence Bass was a steroid abuser, he was not. He was not doing anything freak uh, freakishly with his drug use. Clarence talks about some of this in his books. And I know he dabbled a little bit, but if you look at his size, you can realize he wasn't a mass monster. He was just absolutely ripped and maybe took a little bit uh, to add a little bit of edge for, for some, some of the period of time when he was in this shape. Now, the important thing to understand <clears throat> is that Clarence went on to write more books. Uh, Clarence is still active in the lifting community and has a website. You can hunt it down. But Clarence transitioned off of that stuff. And I'm not, I can't recall how long he was on, uh, you know, performance enhancing drugs. But even in his 40s, in his 50s, in his 60s, in his 70s, and his 80s, Clarence has a picture of himself absolutely shredded compared, obviously, to other, other uh, men that are a similar age. So it's just absolutely stunning. Now, I had an opportunity to interview Clarence uh, maybe eight to ten years ago, and everybody's absolutely forgotten about him, which is a shame because, again, he coined the term rip. He put out the book Ripped in 1980, and he was ripped. He he created this whole ripped concept. Uh, you know, he defined what ripped was. But I got to talk to him, and one of the most interesting things I found out about Clarence is that Clarence pretty much eats healthy every single day. He has his entire life, every single day. Very routine, very clean foods, diet, <clears throat> nothing fancy, meats, fruits, vegetables, you know, healthy fats, the whole nine yards. And um, we were on the topic of, uh, the, the topic came up during our conversation. Uh, we were talking about testosterone uh, for whatever reason. The interview is still floating around there, I believe, at muscleandstrength.com. But he mentioned that his 
testosterone levels, he gets them checked, you know, routinely. I'm not sure how often, but they've always been normal. They've always been in the normal range. So Clarence takes care of himself and um, he eats right. He stayed ripped all of these years, all of these years, even at the age of 80. And he, does, he it's not magic for him. He just eats clean. There's no deprivation, no magic drugs, no madness. It's really his life is a lesson in what it takes to stay lean and mean. So for those of you that are curious about getting ripped, this whole history lesson isn't just nonsense. You can dive into him. You can dive into his story, into his lifestyle, into his website. And if you want to know what it takes to remain lean and mean your entire life, he is the ultimate, ultimate case history that doesn't involve drug abuse. So check him out. Clarence Bass, head over to Amazon. I strongly suggest you check out his book, Ripped. There's going to be nothing earth shattering in there. Again, it's from 1980, but it is definitely a good place to start and get familiar with who Clarence Bass was. So guys, hope this video has been of some help. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. If you made it this far in this video and have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do. I'd appreciate the support. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.